Dwight here from Melbourne, and with us today we have one and only Lars Johansson of Candlemass. How are you doing, sir? Well, I'm doing very fine, thank you. How are you? I am doing good and also excited that the new EP, Death the Lover, would be coming up in the next you know, couple of weeks. You know, a celebration of three decades of doom. I'm sure you guys must be super excited for this. Yeah, we, we we are really happy about it, really, because uh, <clears throat> it was made to make the fans happy and like a, a little statement that okay, this is this is, we've been around for thirty years now, so this is a little a little bonus that uh, there's, there, there's still a possibility to hear some new new songs from Calmas. Awesome, that's good to hear. Before we actually talk about the EP, like you already pointed out, that that when you guys release Psalms for the Dead, which is a masterpiece for me, you guys call it a day in terms of writing new music. You only wanted to tour, you know, uh, around the world playing your classic sounds from three decades. But what really triggered this thought of writing an EP was it just as a as a bonus in celebration of 30 years, or was it something else? I I mean, if you go back to Sounds from the Dead, I mean, Leif is writing all the songs for the band. Yes. And, and he has to be inspired to do that. And the, the album is very, very good. But since everybody noticed, as soon as the album was out, <clears throat> sorry, we, we, we changed vocalists yes. to, to our old uh, friend, Matt. Matt. Mm-hmm. Because uh, in the studio, uh, Rob was doing a good job, but live he was a little un, un, an onshore horse, as we say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we, we, we couldn't keep up with that for, for any longer. So it was a, a chance taking, really. I mean, you're releasing an album and then you change the vocalist. How yes. many bands do that? <laughs> so we were, we were expecting, I mean, hell rain falling from the sky. Like the, the, the fans, the record company, we were thinking they, they will all kill us now. Mm-hmm. We will not be able to do anything at all, but since he's such a professional vocalist and a good frontman, people start to realize that okay, Calmas has switched the board now, and uh, and it all turned out that we, we we gained the things we lost live very quickly, and the band became much much better live. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, Leif got this fatigue syndrome yes. disease that that made uh, made him. He gets so worn out playing live, so he just uh, wants to make songs in, in getting better. Mm-hmm. So he writes songs for his uh, for his own good, and yeah. then for Avatarium and this Kingdom project he has. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and all that. And then we we felt like, well, the band is so good now. Mm-hmm. Uh, sh- uh, shouldn't we try to? Is it possible to make like? Uh, uh, a recording where we have this setting, you know, yeah. with this vocals. And then we, I mean, we, we skipped the keyboards that Per from Opet is playing. Yes, Per and, and he can, yeah, and he can do the bass work whenever you're not there, right. fit, fit and healthy enough. And so, uh, sort of, we have this discussion that how can we keep the flag up mm-hmm. uh, so, so without anybody feeling you know, without any bad feelings about it. Sure. And we came out with a quite good recipe. So, I mean, for every gig that, if, if Leif feels fine, he can jump into whatever gig we have. Yes. But his doctor has told him that he should actually rest this year. So we figured that out. We, we do the EP. Mm-hmm. People will hear the new vocalist uh, in this kind of music. We yes. skip the keyboards so we can do them be- them songs better live. And pair will do the bass. Mm-hmm. So it's like a little, a little puzzle, little, you know. Yeah. That, that's awesome. That's good to hear. And obviously, you know, while listening to the EP, it, it made me feel, it filled me up with joy. I mean, a song like Sleeping Giant has that such an, that hearty dose of traditional doom metal and also stands closer uh, to, to your debut album or let me say the underrated Chapter 6 era. Now, it's amazing to see how, how you guys have maintained this sound despite the different singers who have come over the period of three decades. And mind you, you know, each one of them have left a mark on the discography, isn't it? Yeah, well, you see, the, 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 that's the thing. I mean, as you mentioned, Sleeping Giant is actually one of my favorites. I mean, it's still that really 
really Black Sabbath heavy, but it's not Black Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And when the song in the song when it stops and da -na, and you can hear the giant jaws like, oh, yeah. you can actually see the the the, the, the guy is waking up now. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a great song in all opportunities. And the secrecy behind this thing is actually the 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 parts we do with Jan on the drums mm -hmm. and Mappa and me. We build the, the rhythm guitars together with with the chords. We we play the the same chords but in different places on the neck. Mm -hmm. So we get that sound no matter what vocalist comes in is on, you know. So we yeah. kind of the, the the ground is the same but of course with different vocalists it will be a little different. Yes. But you can still hear that it's the same band, you know what I mean? Absolutely, and and that Matt's and being you know now as a permanent member of the band, I've I've seen him live. I've seen you guys live for the first time at Eindhoven in December. It was it was great to see, and and then I feel you know he's a perfect ideal fit because he brings an own his own touch to the music. Because I've seen him with Crux, which is obviously with Life as well. So these yeah, four yeah. tracks have that in them so how was it for you guys to have him in the studio you know sing these these sing on these tracks where you've seen messiah in the past you then you've seen robert in the past so how is it having mass in studio well i mean uh, when we are when we're recording it's in a very relaxed mood you know mm -hmm. i mean we, we come there we talk about it we, we we jam through the songs so the drums are set you know so we have a platform to build the rhythm guitars on and all right. that and when they are on Leif comes and put the bass on and sometimes uh, not not for this EP actually we, we uh, Matt has his studio at home mm -hmm. and he has two small kids so he made the vocals at home and just sent it to us okay. I mean, it's been very relaxed and, and cool so and I mean I've been working with him with my my, my blues rock album called Fat Mo Mac mm -hmm. and I mean so I, I mean, he's such a professional guy. He just he he just opened his mouth and then he sings. And yeah. Then can, and then I mean, he, the good thing with him is that we can play songs all the way from Epicus all the way through. You know, you know what I mean? Chapter six, the yeah. White Album, Kings of the Grey Island, whatever, Ancient Dream, Tales of Creation. You can just pick a few songs. And he, he, he can go into that mood very smoothly, you know. Right, right. Uh, and the fans notice that, so they don't think like, oh, it was much better when Rob was singing that, or that was much better when Messiah was singing that. Yeah. Even though even though they like the original song on the album, they can go with this one live, live. because it works really good. Absolutely. That was a, I was about to you know talk about that because three vocalists, I mean, three big ones who have made a name even in Candle Mass. And when you join and, and let's say step into the foot of somebody else, there's a lot of responsibility, but there's a lot of expectations as well. How was it for Matt, you know, this time? Because Robert is such a great inside the studio. I mean, we all love his voice. So it must have built some pressure on Matt to basically deliver. Actually, that, that has been always the thing. I mean, I mean, for example, when uh, in the early days when, when Thomas was jumping in for Messiah the yeah. first time, it was a big pressure for him. But he did his thing, and the, and the songs were a little different from um, Chapter Six, for example. Yes. And then uh, uh, time flew away, and we made the White Album with Messiah, and that one, I, that one is a great album. He, I think, he sings like a god on that album. Right. But things didn't, things didn't work out well, mm -hmm. so we made King of the Grey Island which actually was supposed to be Messiah on that one, but he he had other ideas in the middle of the recording. Mm -hmm. So so actually we made a, com a competition. We had like, we played four songs in the studio and had like 60 vocalists that wanted to come, <laughs> come for the play. And, and then all of a sudden this was this guy, this American guy from Texas, Rob Lowe from South I know that guy, we, we've been playing with him in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Okay, check it out. And there he was, and yeah. he did a great job in the studio. Unfortunately, not live. quite as live. No. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Awesome, that's good to hear, Lars. Now, the goose, this this piece, the, the epic cloth, which started with a drum groove, and then you have this, you know, you know, an amazing instrumental track, you know, which probably might be the last recording you guys have done. I'm sure this must have been very emotional when you wrote this track, keeping in mind that this is the final track of the Candlemas EP. 
Actually, it was so funny because Leif gave me the, the demo and said, like, these are the songs, and, and, and the, the last one is called The Goose. And I said, what the fuck did you say, The <laughs> Goose? <laughs> yeah, it's The Goose. It's like the bird goose or the smoking goose or whatever <laughs> goose is. Or, what are you talking about? And then I listened to the song and I said, I mean, Le I told Leif, people don't make songs like this anymore. I mean, <laughs> this is so heavy in the beginning. I mean, oh, go, 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 all the way through the whole thing. Yeah, we'll try to make it cool then with the, some uh, Mexican tones in the middle with a <laughs> yeah, and yeah. And, and it was like, okay. And it, it sort of grows in the studio. That, that's how we do it. I mean, <clears throat> we do the recording <clears throat> and then you notice how the song kind of grows. grows. With, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, uh, and then it turned out to be a, an excellent song to have uh, as a last song. Even on a full-length album, it would have been a great a song to have as a last track, I think. Absolutely. It's good to hear. I mean, you guys have, have all your albums have been phenomenal. And to be honest, even an average Candlemas album can easily be the best of many other bands who are out there who have tried to reproduce your traditional sound. So if I would have to ask you that, what would it take to you guys to continue writing music and release under Candlemas? Actually, if there in the future will be a full length Candlemas album, it all depends on how, how uh, Leif turns out to be in his uh, sickness. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, it's because you have to be inspired. Yes. You have to have fun, and uh, for him, it's like he, he's really putting his soul into the music when he's writing it, and he writes the lyrics as well. True. So it has to be. He has to have the right feel for it, and since he's not been uh, well for so uh, for a while, mm -hmm. you don't want to, you don't want to push it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because he, I, I know that he's sitting in his chamber at home making songs for all kinds of probably. different levels he's doing. So he's probably putting a song aside here and there for different things. And when it comes, when it turns out to be matured, he will tell us that, okay, guys, this is how it is. Or he feels like, I'm, I'm not well enough to, to, to go through this. Uh, whole development from writing to producing to all that because yeah. there's a big expectation if, if we want to put out a full-length album with Canlamas after this EP then it has to be perfect in perfect. all aspects so therefore we just we're just taking it cool year by year like if it works out it works out hopefully he gets well enough to start playing live with us soon <laughs> that is what we all long for Absolutely, that's good to hear. And in fact, I mean, I heard his Dooms Taking Them EP and it was phenomenal. I still see that inspiration in him, obviously with Avatarium, with Marcus Chirill. So he, he still has it in him and I'm sure you guys also as a team would love to have that. And I, I can just hope that, that we have some more music from, from Candlemas in future. Oh yes, we, we we will all hope so. But still, uh, we have a lot of songs to choose from, so we oh, will yeah. put put together some interesting set list during this year for the for the crowd. Absolutely, that's right. Now you know when you look back at your career, I mean, you obviously along with with Mape and Leif are you're the creators of let's say the backbone of of Candlemas. So if you look at how the doom metal scene is now with all the bands coming up or some bands who are already out there. Where do you see it's happening? I mean, because you guys are the creators. So how do you feel as this grown over the period of time? Well, I think it, it all depends. I mean, there are so many bands there that, 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 that claims that they are, they are doom just because they're playing extremely slow. Yeah. But I mean, if you if you look at the Canelma songs overall, some songs are not slow, and no. we're we're mixing fast lines between slow lines and all that. So, I mean, so, some bands which I, I can't remember the name of because I, I meet so many. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that, <laughs> but I mean they're doing a really good job, and they even mix in a few riffs that are really even heavier that goes. Through. Maybe they are sneaking a little bit into the the trash scene, you know. Yes. But still, and then they come back to something extremely heavy riff. And I think I find that uh, really, really, 
uh, impressive and so on. But, but some of the bands that just go for, they, they're, they're doing like one song is 20 minutes and it goes just slow. It doesn't really happen anything at all, oh, okay. except maybe for a good vocalist or something. But I mean, that, that, that is, uh, if you want to put that in a, in a doom shanger, well, fine with me, but uh, I, I don't know. I mean, when we played at Maryland the Festival in uh, Baltimore in the last year, mm -hmm. they said, like, oh, there's Calmas. They're playing old school metal. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, oh, so that is what we're doing. We're playing <laughs> old school metal now. So I mean, it's always <laughs> it's always a question about that. We, we, some people tell, "Oh, you're the new generation of Black Sabbath." Oh, that's very nice of you to saying that, but I think maybe that's a little bit too much. Too much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were doing their thing, um, and you guys were doing your. That's right. Yeah, and I mean, of course, the inspiration is obviously clear, but I mean. Leif is inspired of many bands mm -hmm. when he's writing music. He's not just listening to Black Sabbath. He's sure. listening to your Heap or, or Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young or whatever. <laughs> I mean, what gives you the inspiration for for the new riffs? That could be anything in your uh, nearby atmosphere. So we, we just, uh, I mean, when it comes to new bands, it's hard for me to to. to uh, sometimes I get impressed, and sometimes it just leaves me untouched like okay they're, they're good musician but it doesn't move me really oh. so then i just walk away <laughs> all right that's good to hear lars lars you know obviously uh, you you know uh, is there any project which you want wish to be part of or maybe start something in case uh Canal mass you know don't prefer to to write music maybe something on the doom lines uh, well, as we have uh, we have made the, the, these uh, decisions that we we, we will uh, try to make. Uh, we we, we don't plan too many years ahead. We just take one step year at a time, mm -hmm. yeah, and see what happens, mm -hmm. how it works, how 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 is life's condition, mm -hmm. and how is things going on. We don't we want to that everybody should be uh, friends and in the same level and, and wavelength, you know. So there's yeah. no. Nothing like that, and I sometimes jump into uh, uh, guest projects just because I like. I like like that. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I I play guitar on the Project Hate albums, uh, mm -hmm. for example, and that is uh, not doom metal. That is extremely heavy. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I released last year my blues rock album. That was like something that came from. Alabama or something. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. yeah, yeah, that was just a thing I made to empty my head. The things things that I listened to when I was 12 or 13 years old. Yeah. So I mean, I can um, I, I stick to Canon as as my major thing. Thing, yeah. As, as long as the flame is burning, you know. Absolutely. That's good to hear. Lars, I'll ask you one question. It might be difficult for you to answer. Maybe I see a possibility. Now, if you have to talk about the favorite singer inside the studio, not live, who would it be? Would it be Messiah, Robert, or Matt? Well, it's very difficult to choose. <laughs> I knew that. Because it, it's like, it's like uh, what guitarist do you like? Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, or Ian. <laughs> That's right. Well, they all play in a different style. And it comes to the same thing there. If you consider the fact is, if you if you don't have to be in the studio and work with them, mm -hmm. I would choose Mats. Okay. Because it's easy to work. Easy with to him. work, right, right. Yeah, I get. But it. if you it, it, and, and in all different songs, I mean, Robert give me the chills sometimes when he's, I hear the the albums he's been singing on because he has such a feeling and such a nerve to it. Right, but I, but I know we had to work a little bit in the studio to get that Think to get that. him in that mood, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with Messiah; he was the best vocalist of doing his thing. Yeah, and and you were not able to tell him what to do. He was, he, he Leif gave him the the song lines and the the lyrics, mm -hmm. and then he did his thing, mm -hmm. and it worked out well. But you could never, you know, you could never twist him in any direction because. He was Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. In that case, Matt's is more receptive. He takes in the feedback and, and obviously delivers like what we have heard on the EP. Yeah, he, uh, but I mean, uh, for example, uh, he, he he did these uh, vocal jobs in his studio at home. Mm -hmm. So, but since he's so professional, right. you don't, right. if, if you're not happy with what 
what he's been doing, you just tell him, oh, I didn't like the, the, the third line on the chorus. Mm -hmm. Okay, he says, then I'll do it again. And then, <laughs> so it's like, it's like no problem though, but uh, we, we'll see what happens in the future. I mean, music is an art form, so I mean, everybody is different and everybody has a bad day or a good day. I mean, you, you have to have a, a, a very open mind when you're in the studio. Absolutely. Um, Okay. For me, for example, I never rehearse before I go to the studio. <laughs> That's cool. That's yeah, because cool. you never know what happens. What so, happens? I mean, if I've been rehearsing my ass off, I've maybe been doing that for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's good to hear. Lars, I mean, you've uh, you know, toured Europe, you've toured States as well. I mean, has there ever been any offer for Candle Mass in a country like India? I don't think so, really. Mm -hmm. We had some offers, I mean, from... from uh, from Israel, from from Iran, and stuff like that, but it, it never actually happened, and, and I don't, I can't recall that it has ever come to India. No, no, not not a heavy metal festival in in India. I've never it never came across to our management anyway. So, mm -hmm. but I would be glad to go there. It's great food. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that's good there. So before we conclude, Lars, how about you describe the sound of Death Tile Lover in, let's say, in just one sentence. Uh, extremely powerful. Extremely and powerful and loud. Thanks a lot, Lars. Had a great chat with you. I look forward to see you guys live sometime uh, in as you're touring worldwide. So thanks. Uh, had a great chat and you have a wonderful day ahead. Same for you. Have a good night then and uh, speak to you later on maybe. <laughs> Definitely. Take care. Bye-bye. Cool. Take care. Bye then.